cool. Hello again, welcome to Make Anything. My name's Devin, and this is How to Make Anything, my series where I show you how to make really cool things from scratch. So today we're looking at sphericons. Hopefully you already saw the video I just put out about these really awesome shapes because they're really incredible to watch and I've been having so much fun making so many. Obviously, I'm really into it considering how many I made. But the other reason I have so many sphericons is because the process of making all of these was virtually the same. Of course, with some having a little bit of extra work, but generally it's a very simple process for creating such a weird, non-intuitive shape. I actually got one more Sphericon in the mail today after filming that last video. So this one actually comes from the folks at Sinterit. They recently released their Sinterit Lisa 2, a new SLS desktop printer. And this is one of the prints that came off of their machine. For one thing, it's huge, but the quality is also just stunning. This is my Groove Hexa Sphericon but I actually modeled some balls inside and they were actually printed in place. So this is all a single print and the balls are completely trapped in there. So this would actually make an interesting kid's toy. It's really fun to fiddle around with. Quite weighty though, it might be a weapon. Anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was super cool. But today I'm just gonna show you how to make a more basic hexaspherecon. So we're gonna make the totally standard original hexaspherecon and then I'll also show you how I made this grooved sphericon, which is also very cool. But like I said, once you learn the basic process that I'm teaching you today, you should be able to make an infinite number of different kinds of sphericons. So let's get started and jump right into Fusion 360. All right, so here we are in a brand new project in Fusion 360. As per usual, we'll start by creating a sketch and we'll start this on the right plane. From the sketch menu, we'll go to Polygon and select Inscribed Polygon. And then we'll just click the center origin here and drag upwards. We can change the number of sides we want our polygon to have right there, but we're gonna stick with six here to make our hexaspherecon. From there, I'll hit D to open the dimension tool, select the top and bottom points, and we'll set that to 50 millimeters. Now I'll go ahead and create a line straight down from the top to the bottom, and that's gonna give us something to revolve around. Now I can use the Revolve tool, select one side, and then for the axis, I'll select that center line. By default, this tool will do a full revolve, but we can change the angle here to 180 so that we just make half of our hexaspherecon. Now we want to mirror this to create the second half, and I'll do that by going down to this Mirror tool under the Create menu. Now, I realize there's a little glitch since I selected that face before using the Mirror tool. It won't let me choose the body as a pattern type. So if you just do mirror and then select the body without selecting the face first, you can use body. But anyways, it's a little workaround here. I just selected features and clicked that revolve feature down in the timeline. And that effectively does the same thing. So now we have that full revolve, but since we did it as a mirror, these are two separate bodies. And that's key to this next step. I hit S to bring up this little menu, and then you can type in a tool like move copy. I could have just hit M as well. But anyways, we're gonna select one body and then we're gonna set the move type to rotation. And for the axis of rotation, I'm gonna turn on the origin and then click and hold here to select through my object and select that red X axis. And that's what we're rotating around. Now, since we're working with a six-sided polygon, the trick is just to take 360 degrees and divide that by the number of sides. So 360 divided by six, and that effectively gives us the 60 degree rotation to create the hexaspherecon. So there we have it. We already have our hexaspherecon. It's really that easy. And if we wanted to, we could now use the combine tool and combine both of these into one body and have a solid hexaspherecon. But since we're designing this for FDM 3D printing, I'm gonna keep the two halves separate because it'll be easier to print in two parts. Instead, I'm gonna create a little cutout on the inside here so that we can snap the two pieces together. So I created another hexagon, and let's just make this one 18 millimeters tall, and then I'll hit O to use the offset tool and create a 0.2 millimeter offset. I'll do another offset inwards, two millimeters, and that's gonna become the connector part. 
Now we can click this extrude tool and we'll select all of those polygons we just made. We'll select symmetric here to extrude equally in both directions and let's do a 10 millimeter cut both ways. So that creates a 20 millimeter cutout and we can actually make that a little smaller. Let's just make that eight for now. So now when I hide one side, you can see that we have this hexagon cutout inside both halves of this hexaspherical. Now let's open up this drop down sketch menu and turn on the last sketch again. Since we used it, it turned off automatically, but we can just go ahead and turn it on. And now we can select just this part of our sketch and that's gonna be the connector piece. So I'll select that, we'll do symmetric again. And this time we'll make it a little bit shorter. So let's just go with 7.5 millimeters for the distance. That way there's a little bit of wiggle room, but basically you should be able to hold the pieces together with that. So there we go. If I change the sketch style, you can see it on the inside there. We could be done here, but I'm gonna do a few little changes to make it easier to print. That's always my goal. So what I'll do next is go ahead and select the chamfer tool. And then I'm gonna put a little chamfer around these bottom edges. This is the surface that's gonna be on the build plate while we're printing. And by putting a little chamfer on it there, that keeps it from smushing and becoming smaller than it's supposed to be. Basically, it's just gonna help our print remain more accurate. The first layer or two of a print sometimes are a little wider than they're supposed to be. Now for this little inside connector, we can also put chamfers on these outer edges for the same reason, and just to make it easier to push it all together. And since this is a thin part, we'll just give it a 0.5 millimeter uh, chamfer in both directions. All right, there we go. That's our hexaspherical. It's good to go. We just print those parts and snap them together. Why don't we go ahead and give it some color? We'll just put an appearance on there to see what it might look like in different colors. It looks very nice. So we could definitely be done here, but I promised you that I would show you how to make just about any kind of hexaspherical. So let's go ahead and do that now. And all you have to do is go back to the timeline, to that very first sketch we created, and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and select Edit Sketch. So now that we're back into this sketch, we can add some more complexity. So let's go ahead and select the Fillet tool here to give us some rounded edges. So you can either click a point or two sides that connect and it'll create a fillet there. So we'll just go ahead and do this on all sides. And here it was already set to six millimeters. That looks pretty good to me. So we'll just go ahead and hit enter. And now when I exit that sketch, you can see it's automatically rounded. And if we go to the end, all the changes have already been applied. Now we have our nice, smooth, rounded hexaspherical. But let's go back to the original sketch and get a little more funky with it. For this one, I'm gonna create a line here from the center to the center point of one of these sides, and that'll allow me to create some kind of a symmetrical cutout that I wanna make. Think of it kind of like when you were a kid and you made those snowflakes by cutting paper. We're doing that and just cutting out parts of this shape. Basically, the key here is just to make sure that you stay symmetrical, otherwise you might run into problems. So now I'll double click this line to select the whole chain, and we'll go down here to circular pattern, and for the center point, we'll select that origin. Now we just make this quantity match the number of sides we have, so six, and there we go. But this time it didn't automatically make those changes. So what we'll do is right click here on the revolve feature and select edit feature, and then you can just hold down control and deselect the parts you wanna cut out. Now it's applied, but as you can see, that cutout we made later on kind of intersects with our spherical, so that's gonna be a little bit messy. Let's go back into the sketch here and how about we fix that by just adding a circle here in the center. So now I'll go back, edit this revolve feature, and we'll once again select those circular parts of the profile. And now when we apply, it doesn't intersect with that cutout we made to snap the two parts together. And this looks pretty cool too. It's like some planet from an alternate dimension. We can also make some changes at this point. For example, if we wanna add a fillet to all these edges, we can just go ahead and use that fillet feature and select all of these edges. Make sure to get them all, and then we can just drag this and create some interesting swoops there as well. So maybe something like that. We just gotta kind of visually test it and see what looks good.
clearly I missed an edge on the bottom here, but that's no big deal. We'll just go right click on that fillet, edit feature, and then we can hold control and add that edge as well. There's still some kind of glitch going on here. I think that's just based on the fillet we chose. If we actually expand it a little bit, it seems to resolve itself. And now we have a completely smooth shape. Let's go ahead and change the display style here to shaded so we get a more realistic idea of what it'll look like all printed out. It looks really cool in my opinion. All right, so I'm happy with that. So it's time to save this out and get it ready to print. So to do that, you just go over here to the body menu, you right click on the one that you wanna save out and you'll select save as STL. Once that dialog pops up, you'll get all kinds of settings, but here the basic settings work out pretty fine. We'll keep the refinement high, which is a good thing to do with objects that have a lot of curved surfaces. And so we'll just hit okay and save it out like that. I will also save out this little central connector and save that out. And that's all we have to do since the two halves are actually identical. So we can just save that one half and print it twice. I've moved over to Simplify 3D here, which is the slicer that I like to use. Although Cura is a fantastic free option as well. I'll just run through this pretty quickly since slicer settings depend on the slicer as well as the printer. But as you can see, I'm just arranging things nice and close together so that they can print pretty quickly. I've got all the settings here already set up for my Dremel printer. The temperature and the extruder temperature are good for ABS, which is what I'm gonna print this in. And with ABS, it's also good to not have a fan cooling since that can cause some shrinkage. So yeah, everything looks good here. We could actually take this infill down to maybe 5%. It's a pretty simple shape. As long as the outline perimeters are good and we've got enough top and bottom layers. Layer height here is 0.12 millimeters, which should be nice for smoothing out with acetone smoothing, which is what we're gonna do here. So yeah, there's all our settings. Let's go ahead and prepare that to print. It's always a good idea to run through the preview just to make sure you don't see any funky things going on. So I'll just run through the layers and everything here looks pretty simple and straightforward. Yeah, it looks good. So let's just go ahead and save that G code and we'll load it onto the printer. All right, I didn't get any footage of this actually printing out, but here is the finished job. And as you can see, the print came out looking really great. It's pretty clean and it's definitely a nice print already. But like I said, I wanna do some acetone smoothing just as a little extra something. So here I am prepping my acetone chamber. I have an old video entirely dedicated to this process and I haven't really changed my process. So you can just go ahead and watch that if you're interested in doing some acetone smoothing. But basically, I'm enclosing my print in this chamber of acetone vapor, and that creates a reaction with the ABS plastic and melts it down to make it all glossy and shiny and smooth. I actually forgot it in this chamber for a couple hours, so here it is maybe two hours later, and as you can see, there is a dramatic difference. It's very shiny now, and it actually keeps this glossy finish. It's not just because it's wet or anything, it's just turned into this really glossy plastic. And I love that. So there we go. We've got our very nice, smooth, six groove hexaspherecon. And now there's nothing to do but let it roll. Well, there you have it. That's my process for making spherecons. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was easy enough to follow along and I'm really looking forward to what you guys come up with. If you make something cool, please visit makeanything.design slash community and share your prints with me. Either send them directly to me on email by the contact form, or you can go to reddit.com slash r slash make anything. It's a community forum where you can post your work and get feedback and just share the cool stuff you're making. All right, well, that's it for this time. I'll see you in the next video. I'll have another episode of how to make anything coming out soon. So look forward to that. Let's keep making some really cool stuff together. All right, until next time, I'm Devin. This is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. I just wanted to take a bite out of this like an apple. Wouldn't that be a quite an ending? Stay inspired. <laughs> It'll be possible one day. GMOs and all that.